When your mother dies, you really get to know that her clothes have never suited you. <laughs> her mustard suede. Because it made me look green, I thought I'd never wear it. And because she thought it made her look smart, and it did not, I hung it away until last week, when in a rush I yanked it from the cupboard, shoved my arm into the sleeve, heard the hiss of taffeta tearing, saw how the cuffs were frayed, and thought I caught a whiff of white linen, the only scent I'd ever bought her that she liked. And when I put my hand in the pocket, the surprise was not to find her driving gloves, the index fingers worn through at the tips, how she never replaced them, or the old car. Here's Leslie with an outfit suited to the best rescue moments. <laughs> My hand edges towards the cuff through the cave of the sleeve where the fur embraces my arm. A ripe rush of new leather rises around me as I pull the matching toque over my forehead. My cheekbones push up high under my kirgit's eyes as I fasten the braided loops over the toggles tight across my breasts, my heart, feel fur-lined boots creep over my ankles, up my calves, while Vronsky watches from the Troika. There is the cry of Siberian wolves, but I ignore their portent, though the horses stamp and steam, their hooves nervous. My head is full of samovars, pale tea in tall glasses with filigree holders that sear my fingers, the transparency of lemon slices. My feet are running, slipping on frozen snow as my voice calls out in another language that might be Russian, and I feel the steam of a screaming train. Mm. me in my Ho Chi Minh sandals, and it has an epigraph. You can kill ten of my men for every one I kill of yours, that even at those odds you will lose and I will win. Ho Chi Minh, 1945. 1945. I shed inches, become compact, agile, my body supple as elastic so I can fold up flat like that contortionist beggar. The muscles in my calves are knotted rope. I can squat on my haunches for hours, turn the unexploded shells of my enemy into lethal snares to blast him. I sharpen bamboo to the thickness of my wrists which I will plant in the earth to impale him when he falls steps, as he will, on the shutters of the window trap, where he'll fall to be spiked for his foolishness. My eyes are ovals of onyx set in porcelain pleats of skin. Mm -hmm. They pierce the dark as I wolf lope through the caves, bent double, join my comrades in the planning room, drink tea, from bone-thin China, sharpen our senses, drip to peace, as if we do not know how long it will take, how many of us will die waiting. But we are many, slip into each other's rubber sandals with silent ease. In the cause of freedom, we bond under the mantle of our collective imagination. Victory cannot be far away. In my Ho Chi Minh sandals, I know I can walk that far. Aunt Ruby's coats chose her for different reasons. The red taunted her. 
drove her to overspend, seduced her with its softness, caused her to covet cashmere, but the buttons were dull. The suede jacket, leather trimmed, had a sadistic streak, belted her in half, squeezed her into an hourglass the color of French mustard. The white camel's hair arrived behind her sister's coffin in need of a new home, offered itself, then devoured her whole, transformed her into an arctic bundle, large woman size. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe, they huddled on the coat rack, allowed her to choose a different frumpery for each and every occasion. Thank <laughs> you.